Hello, my name is Ethan Kim, and I am a junior staffer. Today, I will be talking with you about why the California Delete Act should be made federal law. So as a quick overview, I will be discussing what is the California Delete Act, data brokerage's impact on consumers, current US national legislation regarding data brokers, and my recommendations. To start, what is the California Delete Act? California Delete Act, or Senate Bill 362, was signed into Californian law on October 10th of 2023 by Governor Gavin Newsom. Essentially, the California Delete Act allows consumers or any citizen of the state of California to request the deletion of all their data held by data brokers within the state of California. In addition to the deletion of their data, uh, data brokers are subjected to increased restrictions and stipulations regarding the information they can collect and the information they must report on. For the deletion mechanism, the CPA, CPPA must create the deletion mechanism by January 1st of 2026. Uh, data brokers must access this mechanism uh, at least once every 45 days, and upon seeing a request, they must respond to it within another 45 days. They can respond to this request by either complying with it or rejecting it as an unverifiable request. An unverifiable request is treated as the consumer opting out of the sell and share of their data. So there's not much discrepancy on the data brokers end. This is also a continuous deletion process. So once a consumer requests the deletion of their data, uh, the data broker must continuously, at least once every 45 days for the indeterminable future, um, delete that consumer's data. They also cannot sell or sh share that data um, forever. Some disclosure and ob audit obligations regarding data brokers. Uh, they must be required to report on the number of disclosures received, complied, and rejected. They must also report on uh, their average time to comply with a request. They must also report on any data they have on minors, specific geolocation data, and data regarding reproductive health for women. They must also provide a clear explanation on uh, the processes that consumers can take for deleting their data on their websites, and they cannot have any amb ambiguous text or um, different font styles to make it hard to read. Every three years, starting January of 2028, um, each data broker will be audited by a third party. This third party will be required to report to the CPPA uh, within five days of the CPPA requesting it. And starting in 2029, data brokers must um, submit any audit data they have before registering. And some enforcement policies are a $200 fine for um, each day that a data broker fails to register and the accumulation of all the fines are put into a data broker registry fund to keep the um, deletion mechanism up and going and also just the other enforcement policies. So now I'll discuss some of the support for the California Delete Act. Um, as you can see on the chart to the right, 80% of the legislative votes um, were in favor of the California Delete Act, and it was signed by Governor Gavin Newsom. In addition, 81% of Californians surveyed uh, were in support of this bill. And this was a survey of 500 individuals. And in this survey, uh, additionally, 91% of Californians um, said that they had concerns over their use of data by data brokers, with uh, 54 expressing extreme concern. In addition, 80% said that they would be using this deletion mechanism once it was in place. So this just reiterates the, the need and um, how necessary this uh, act was. Data brokerages impact on consumers. So data, brokerage, data brokers operate by collecting uh, information, whether online or not online through public records and creating profiles on individuals. They can collect contact information, level of education, shopping habits, income, interests and hobbies, occupation, political views, and health history to create a profile used for uh, commercial use. And as you can see on this chart on the right, 
um, use of data and data activation solutions, which are just the use of data to create targeted ads or things of that nature, um, has risen throughout the years. And as of 2021, uh, $22 billion was spent. So now I'll discuss uh, some of the abuses by data brokers. So through their profiling, they tend to um, affect the most vulnerable in our society the most. Um, some of the groups or profiles that they create are like cholesterol focused or diabetes interest or other, uh, other categories that um, really affect the elderly minorities or um, those with health problems. And as you, that can be a definite problem for those individuals as they're being targeted by these companies. And in addition to affecting the most vulnerable, um, data brokers also have a lot of influence in politics. Um, in 2012, Obama used a data-driven um, campaign to collect a bunch of information and use a bunch of targeted ads for his campaign. And in 2020, Donald Trump did the same thing with Cambridge Analytica. Um, he obtained 50 million Facebook user um, information, and he created psychological tools to um, targeted to target uh, information that those users would likely um, like to see. And in this poll on the right, 54% um, Americans do not want uh, political ads on social media. So as you can see, data brokers have a lot of unwanted influence in our lives. In addition to political influence, um, data brokers also use a lot of our medical data. Um, medical data is supposed to be anonymized and um, untraceable, but through simple data mining techniques, they can easily be re-identified. Re and the data brokers use this information obtained from hospitals um, to create profiles and sell them to pharmacy companies for targeting med medicinal ads and marketing strategies. In addition, they also have um, abused data on specific individuals through white pages, and um, they have provided addresses with addresses, uh, phone numbers, et cetera, which has, which has led to numerous um, instances of harassment, stalking, rape, and even murder on predominantly women. Um, in addition, they also advertise this data for sale. Um, there have been numerous reports by the FTC on how data brokers have um, advertised that they are selling data on those with mental illnesses and also on active military personnel, which is can definitely be a national security concern or former. So some current U.S. national legislation, um, currently there are no federal laws that fully regulate data brokers, but under the FTC Act, uh, the FTC can uh, investigate and convict or, or punish um, actions they, de seem, they deem unfair or unlawful. And they have really used this power, especially recently. Um, I think in 2022, they filed a lawsuit against Kochava uh, which is a company that was um, unconsensually um, obtaining specific geolocation data. And um, the second uh, part of national legislation is the American Data Privacy and Protection Act. And this has not been passed into national law, but it is probably the most comprehensive uh, data privacy act uh, that has made moves within our um, national legislation. And under this act, um, it limits the collection and processing and transfer of data that is not deemed necessary. Um, they also um, emphasize a affirmative consent of the sale of data on individuals. Um, they also prevent organizations from using race, ethnicity, uh, religion, gender um, for processing and creating profiles on individuals. And under this act, uh, it would create the Bureau of Privacy, which would be enforced by the FTC.
So some challenges of passing national privacy laws. Um, the first and probably most difficult challenge is the um, challenge of preemption. And that is the main um, obstacle with the American Data Privacy and Protection Act. So basically the Californian um, legislators really oppose this because they believe that under uh, the passing of the ADPPA, it would um, invalidate a lot of the processes they have already um, undergone through their California Delete Act. And they are the main opposition for um, its passing within our national government. And the second is enforcement. Um, after four years, um, right of private action will be allowed within um, this act, which allows uh, private individuals to file lawsuits against uh, companies and businesses for the collection of the data. And the fear is that a lot of these lawsuits will be frivolous by um, people just looking to make money. And I can definitely see how that could be a valid concern, but I will address these in my recommendations. So some recommendations I have are, I have two recommendations. The first is a national legislation alignment. Um, I would amend the ADPPA to act as a floor preemption to state laws. So as a floor preemption, it would be the, the minimum. So it would not override any other um, state laws and states can create stricter uh, regulations on data brokers. And I would also remove the private right of action because this is a bipartisan bill, um, this was one of the main um, uh, propositions of the Democratic Party. And um, I think to balance it out and hopefully to retain bipartisanship, um, this would help it pass. And second, I would promote public awareness. And this is probably more important in the moment. Um, I would inform the general public on the abuses of their personal data by these data brokers and really uh, emphasize grassroots lobbying. Um, I, I want people to spurn state representatives um, to enact data protection laws for their individual states because that is probably the way that the most um, protection is gonna come, especially with the stalemate within the uh, national legislature. So in summary, um, the California Delete Act is a good, very good law for California, but there are a lot of challenges that arise in trying to pass it as a national law. So I would make amendments to a national law that has made some progress and is quite similar to the California Delete Act with some amendments that would hopefully encourage bipartisanship and also allow the state of California to uh, support it as well. Thank you.